Welcome back to Fuel Up Classic. Now, I fully understand that a lot of people will never view a BMW X5 as a modern classic, but take a closer look and you start to realize that the E53 first generation of X5 made its debut 25 years ago. Now, I was somewhat shocked at that figure. I can't believe that this car has been around as long as it has. Now, at the time, it was an incredibly important car for BMW, and it changed an awful lot on the motoring landscape. And we'll take a closer look at that when we take it out for a drive, and I'll talk you through why this car was such an important car for BMW at the time. But let's talk about now, because I've put in the title that this is a modern classic. And I think if you buy wisely, these could be a little bit of a shrewd investment. This particular car has been in the family for a number of years now. I'll tell you why it was bought in the first place, because it is a little bit of a laughable story of how this car came about. But also, they're cheap. In our experience, it's been very reliable. There has been some hiccups along the way. And I still think it's got a little bit of desirability about it well worth a closer look in my eyes. So let's take it out for a drive and let's have a good look round the first generation of BMW X5. So now we're out on the open road. You've made it through the title, you've made it through the intro. I've made a very bold claim that the X5 is a modern classic. Just hear me out on this. And I'll start by just telling you why it's a bit of an icon. And when you look at the other BMW models of the era, the E38 7 Series, the E39 5 Series, those cars are really highly regarded now. They're getting a great following. Prices are on the increase. So why are we not looking at the X5 in the same way? Because this is a car that sold really well. They made 450,000 of these in the first six years alone. And very few cars I think you can lend the word trailblazer to. But with the X5, I think you can. Because cast your mind back to the late 90s and early 2000s, what else was out there that offered the same as the X5? because I've racked my brains and I can't think of anything else. Yes, there's the Mercedes ML that slightly pipped it to production, but it's not the same type of car. Great car in itself, but it's not the same as an X5. And you start to look a little bit further than that and you realize the very development of this car is a miracle in itself it shouldn't work as well as it does. I mean, BMW at the time had the massively beneficial thing that they owned the Rover company at the time. And that meant when they were developing this car, not only could they pick on the very best bits of what they did so well, taking many, many parts, as will be clear within the interior alone, but so much of this car is shared with the E39 5 series. So not only is that a great cost-cutting exercise for them, it also was one of the best saloon cars in the world at the time, so why not take bits from it? But they were also able to lean on the development of the all-wheel drive technology of Land Rover, arguably the best in the business when it comes to that side of things. Now that combination together of them being able to cherry pick so much shouldn't work, but all those ingredients together make a great recipe. And what they did, which in itself sounds somewhat ludicrous, was they pulled off producing a car that looks like a big, chunky off-roader, but was massively more biased towards on-road driving experience. Now, those two things shouldn't go together. And at the time, there was nothing else like it. But think about now, think about the legacy of the X5 and what is every other manufacturer doing now? They're all doing the same thing. But the X5 was the trailblazer for that. 
And I think for that, we've got to give it some credit. And there's a good reason that perhaps in a few years time, we might start to see these really early models just starting to creep up in value slightly. So, it's all very well talking about it, but when it comes to parting with your own cash, which is exactly what happened with this very car, should you do it? Does it make a lot of sense? Well, I can't really answer that for you, but what I can tell you is this particular car has been in my family now for about three years. It was very much a stopgap car. It wasn't really on anyone's radar to buy. Needed a car in a hurry, a little bit of a workhorse, but also it needed to do one job and that was to get us all into central London on a regular basis and, crucially, sweep under the low emission charges that are rolling out across the country. It was just starting around that time and we were finding that a lot of our other cars weren't um, exempt from it. So, I looked in the classifieds, looked at all the obvious choices and could not believe it was also a time in which, you know, Covid times in which used car prices went absolutely crazy. I couldn't believe that I could get hold of a BMW X5, a car that I can remember when I was a child at school was the car to have. If your parents had an X5, you were the daddy. That was the coolest car in the, in the school car park at the time. And they were very expensive as well. But I was looking at these cars at £2,000, some of them maybe three, £4,000 for a better example. And I couldn't believe it. So we jumped on this one. This I think is a really interesting combination. It's the one that I would seek out all over again if I was in the market for one. Because it's the three litre straight six petrol version, much rarer than the diesel. You will find that so many on offer are diesel variants for obvious reasons. Diesel at the time was the in thing. But this M54 straight six is a really robust engine. And actually, if you wanna have a little bit of fun and you can't do this in a Land Rover of the era, I can tell you, put your foot down, makes a nice noise and it hustles down the road really, really well. And this is where an X5 is way above an ML Mercedes of the era or anything like that, because I'm carrying 60 miles an hour through a B road, there's no body roll. It drives, perhaps somewhat unremarkably, like a 5 Series of the era. How they managed to pull this off, I'll never know. Everyone thinks this is a huge car, and in its time, it was a large car but as we all know cars have got bigger and bigger and more bloated and heavier over the last 25 years and I have no issue whatsoever driving this car to central London park it next to a new X5 or an X7 or something like that and they absolutely dwarf this car this is comparatively small these days it fits in a normal sized parking spot which the new ones don't you might be surprised to learn that this E53 X5 is actually a little bit shorter than an E39 5 Series. And in actual fact, it's only marginally longer than the 3 Series of the time. It's a little bit heavy on fuel. It does about 20 to 22 miles to the gallon, depending on how you drive it. And what I can tell you is in three years of driving, no major mechanical issues whatsoever. It doesn't do huge mileages, admittedly, but uh, nevertheless, it's always been a trustworthy car to get us wherever we need to be. Silly things like door locks have failed. I think three out of the four have failed over the years. And a few other little faults like that, just as the car gets old, things, you know, break and they don't work as well as they should. But when I think back to less than £2,000 was paid for this car. What an absolute bargain. And as I say, you can hustle it down a road, you can have a bit of fun with it. 
it's comfortable, it's on the firm side, but it's certainly not unpleasant. And I, again, I hark back to the idea that the modern SUVs that are being produced now, certainly the performance ones, are much harder, much stiffer, and I think just less enjoyable because of it. This car is actually relatively soft in the way it gets down the road. So if I'm helping persuade you to part with some money for one of these, you might just want to have a quick run through the lineup of what is available on these first generation X5s because not all are that reliable and some will come with much higher costs than others. So it's really important to be aware of that. I've spoken about this one. It's a three litre straight six. It would be my pick of the bunch, but it was pure coincidence that this one happened to come our way and they are a bit of a rare beast. Now, other petrol engine options, you're going then into the V8s. You've got the 4.4, which is an engine that's very similar to the one fitted in the early 2000s Range Rover. You've got the 4.6, which is a little bit of a rare beast. You don't see many of them anymore, the 4.6 ISs. And then you've got the big one, the 4.8 IS that came afterwards. Now, they offer massively improved performance. They're really good fun, by the way, but running costs will be significantly higher. Fuel consumption will be in the teens if you're lucky. And especially when you get into the 4.8s, there are some known issues with those cars and they can be very expensive to put right. So let's be honest, we're talking about quite cheap cars now. A lot of them out there haven't been maintained like they should have been. There are a lot of really rough examples. So just bear that in mind, try and find a good one. And you will need to go for a petrol version if you want one to scoop under all of those low emission zones that are rolling out pretty much across most of Europe now. And then of course you've got the diesel, by far the most plentiful option, as I've mentioned great engine tried and tested little bit of a nasty habit of chewing up gearboxes in those um, but really now the car's getting on a bit it's probably had that rectified or it won't be an issue uh, in the long run but that's probably going to be your most plentiful one out there a lot of them have done a lot of miles and been a bit abused so don't necessarily jump for a diesel unless you absolutely need it. As I've said before, they're also not that economical. I choose a straight six petrol engine version any day of the week. So I've given you a very long rundown of why I think the X5 might just be a modern classic. But it's really for you guys at home to make your own mind up. But I do think in very brief summary, if you look at what else was on offer from BMW at the time and how in 2024, people are starting to wake up to them and values are rising, i.e. the three, the five and the seven series of the era, all creeping up in value. I don't think we're too far away to expect that perhaps the X5 might start to go the same way. And also, I think the styling of these early X5s has never been bettered. I certainly think that it's much better than BMW's latest offerings, but also the subsequent X5s that came afterwards, it got a bit bloated, it got a bit ungainly. This car, I think, you could almost call it elegant. It is quite a good looking car, and obviously plenty of practicality, split, tailgate as you'd get on a Range Rover on one of these as well. I often wonder if that's a little bit of something that they stole from Rover at the time when they were in ownership, I don't know. Interior wise, pretty much exactly like an E39 5 Series, i.e. rock solid, very Germanic, quite dull, quite grey, but really well built and just a nice place to be. It drives well, it handles well. It's quite interesting to call it a driver's car because it is in some ways and also we've talked about how much of an icon 
I think the car is. It was, it was a car that changed the game. It's still doing that to this day. I mean, 2024, we all know what big cars are selling out there and what manufacturers are making, and it's sports performance-based SUVs. Well, they all started with this one. So whether you like it or loathe it for that, that's its legacy. And a car with a legacy should probably be regarded pretty favorably in, in time, I'm sure. And best still, and the bit I like about it, is they're still cheap. Less than 2,000 pounds gets you behind the wheel of one. Tell me what else you can buy for that kind of money that offers this kind of package. So there you have it. Lots to unpack there, lots to think about. I know it won't be everyone's cup of tea, and I fully get that. But don't dismiss it till you've tried it. Let me know in the comments below whether you think it is a modern classic, or let me know if you, you don't think it is. Let me know if you think its rivals are better. There we have it. Just wanted to do a video on this one. We've got some really good cars lined up over the next few months on the channel. Thank you very much for subscribing if you haven't already. And I look forward to bringing you lots of videos very soon.